16-year-old William Reinhardt jumped up on his father's best horse and wheeled it around and galloped off toward the sound of huge explosions in Sharpsburg and into manhood. Before that day in 1862 was out, he had his taste of manhood in a foot wound, and he was carried home among countless wounded men that jammed the shallow portions of Pack Horse Ford below Shepherdstown, seeking medical care. Young Bill, sadder but wiser, and wondering how he was going to explain to his stern German father, Christian, that he lost his best horse in battle, sat bleeding for two days in the ruins of an old mill near the ford while word got back to his family. Little did he know, and how could he know, that his future wife was not too far away, a screaming day-old infant. Bill ran with Virginia's 12th Cavalry in Company D, along with his brother Andrew, throughout all of the war, getting captured on one of the times he snuck home to get a fresh horse and to help out with the harvest. Finally, the two brothers returned home for good to what was left of their farm called Willowwell. Father Christian was old and now a broken man after the years of having his crops stolen, his hogs grabbed, and his property destroyed. In three short years he was dead and the farm was now for William and Brother Edward to cultivate. Peacetime took different skills and a different sort of person. And luck was William's because his bright blue eyes and fair hair and fair humor and kindly way drew people to him, lots of people. He was liked by all. In time, his good way with people drew him from behind the plow on a lonely farm and into other lines of work, such as buying and selling stud horses, and ultimately as the town postmaster where his pleasant way with people was invaluable every day. He loved to tell the story about the time he and Doc Reynolds went fishing with the President of the United States. It was a Thursday while President Grover Cleveland was fishing with Bill and Doc Reynolds in front of Knott's Mill. In a deep hole, he had a fierce strike, but the fish escaped. Cleveland remarked that he had missed a big bass. He was sure. So Friday, Doc Reynolds was fishing in the same place as Bill would tell the story when he caught a bass that weighed five and a quarter pounds. Bill used to say that Doc Reynolds recognized the prior claim on that fish of the President of the United States. So they decided that the big bass would be placed in Bill Reinhardt's spring, where he lived contentedly until that Sunday evening. Then he was carefully packed in watercrafts, and Mr. John H. Schopert carried him to Washington to the President of the United States. Now that woman in Bill Reinhardt's life finally became his wife, when he reached 40, she was a midlife crisis and a resolution all rolled into one. Just like his father, he married a woman much younger than he, with almost a thoughtful and conscious eye to having good stock and lots of children. And before he died, he had a child named Laura, Nettie, Anna, John, Mabel, Mary, and William. Mary, who was born in 1899, still lives today in 1996 on Terrapin Neck outside Shepherdstown and is locally famed as the last true daughter of the Civil War, the only woman to have a father, yes, a father who fought in the Battle of Antietam. Around 1917, Bill Reinhardt felt the first signs of throat cancer and he could rely on the support of all his many friends, including the old buddies from his old Virginia 12th who he met at the reunion in 1896. When he died in August of that year, the editor of the Shepherdstown Register, whose father rode with Bill in the war, wrote of him this way. 
Will Reinhardt was one of the biggest hearted men we have ever known. Generous and kindly, considerate. He was a friend to all and no trouble was too great and no sacrifice too heavy when it came to serving those whom he esteemed. He was one of the most companionable and genial of men, always cheerful and optimistic. His way of looking at the bright side of affairs was an inspiration, and he has helped to dispel many a cloud of sorrow and anxiety. He was never happier than when he was doing some kindness or service for others. How he will be missed in this community where his genial good fellowship and kindness has gained him so many friends. Thank you.